All right, folks, child's pose where we're starting out. So your toes are together, you're sitting on your heels. Come on, Damon. We're gonna take a few minutes here just breathing. So get comfortable, do whatever you need to do. Some folks like to take their knees wider. Some folks like to put something underneath their thighs to sit on. And some folks like to prop their heads up. So keep your options kind of open. Do whatever you need to do so that you can breathe really deeply. And start to take big, expansive, strong breath in your belly and your rib cage. And I like to start out with a little bit of wiggling and kind of shifting the weight side to side too. So kind of massaging open the tissue in the outsides and for your hips. But as you get settled in, you start to feel more comfortable, more grounded in this posture. And it'll tend to soften up after about 30 seconds or so. Things tend to change if we stay in a posture for about 30 seconds. We want to start to feel that big breath expanding all the space across the, the front, back, and sides. And then the exhale draws all that expansion back inward. I like to think of inhale, get big. Exhale, get really little. And take a few more moments here, just cultivating your slow, relaxed breath. Use your imagination to feel the parts of your body that might be holding tension, just melting open. Notice your jaw melting and your forehead getting soft. And see if you could lengthen your breath by maybe a second or two. I know that we've spent a lot of time here in this posture. Begin to watch your thoughts and notice anything. Notice patterns, notice themes, but just observe. Observe the thoughts. You would look at any perfect feature of nature without critiquing or categorizing, just enjoying its beauty. Let's bring in a little bit of side stretch here. So walk those hands out away from your hips. Keep a nice heaviness in your hips. And sometimes I like to experiment in child's pose with activating the legs a little more. So perhaps your legs have been quite passive in this posture and you're welcome to keep interpreting it in that way. But maybe you wanna try activating the legs a little bit as if you're trying to pull the knees inward and push them down at the same time. So notice if that might feel different in your hips as you walk your hands out to the left and we start to get a great stretch across the right side here. So drop your head. Big breaths into that right side of the rib cage. 
keep those legs a little bit active. And feel the right side of the neck, even the right armpit. All right, let's bring the hands through center. And we're just gonna switch sides. So hands are coming out to the right now. Strong in the legs, pulling them together and down. We're gonna move the hips a little over to the left. Big breath into that left side here. And we can really use breath to open up all the little spaces between your ribs. Anywhere you feel stickiness. All right, bring the hands back through center and pull yourself up to hands and knees. Okay, let's take the knees kind of wide here. Knees wide and hands wide. And I wanna do some kind of gentle circles, just getting your shoulders and your hips a little more warm and open. So make big circles here. And you might hear some pops, that's okay. Gonna move all the synovial fluid around in your joints. Let's take it back the other way. Circle back around a few times. Nice, maybe one more, I'll meet you up top. Okay, back to a normal uh, hands and knees position. And let's get the right leg out behind. Go ahead and tuck those toes. Drop that right heel. And we're gonna, we're gonna pivot on that left lower leg, left knee, okay, to a supported side plank. So make sure you might arrange yourself a little bit um, extra to be sure that that left knee is under your left hip. And that's just gonna give you more stability. It's gonna be more enjoyable. So find that side plank, start to press down into the outer edge of your right foot. Close your eyes here. Enjoy a really great stretch across the whole right side. Let's open up this right shoulder. So strong in the arms. I want you to bend in both your elbows. Think of big chest here and active in that right shoulder. Circle it out. So we want to try to isolate this. Okay, do your best. Notice if your rib cage tends to want to swing along with you, isolate it. And let's rewind that shoulder. Nice. Next time that right hand reaches over your head, I want you to just leave it right there. So it's reaching out to uh, the left over there, dropping that right foot. You get a great stretch across your side body. So maybe this is feeling pretty good. You want to hang right here. Maybe you want a little bit of stretching across your chest and armpit. So you cactus that right arm and you start to lift your chest toward the ceiling. So you can make it kind of a back bend kind of feeling if you like. Remember to lift that chest and pull your belly button into your spine. So I wanna feel big spaciousness across that front body. Maybe one more big breath, whatever variation you're in. And then we're coming back down to hands and knees. So spiral yourself all the way back down. And again, take these knees wide, take the hands wide, and let's take some more big circles. So feel free to really move into the hips and the shoulders. Rewind that. Okay, I'll meet you back in a regular hands and knees position. And then we'll transition to a supported side plank on the other side. 
So just like the other side, we'll send the left leg out, drop those toes, drop that left heel, pivot on the right knee, and then the left hand can come up. So your other side, I'll spin around to face you. So take a little time here, fidget everything into just the right place. Big stretch all across the left side. So the more you ground through the outer edge of that left foot, the better. It feels good in your ankle. Strong arms, so we want a little bend in both elbows. A big, strong chest here. Active both shoulders as we circle out that left shoulder. We're really isolating it so we can warm and release that whole joint, the shoulder complex. <laughs> Let's rewind that. Okay, next time that left hand reaches over your head, so the elbow's by your ear, reach and just enjoy that for a little while. So big stretch on your left side. You might be wanting more of a side stretch. You might be wanting that cactus arm on the left, peeling and lifting your heart open. Remember to put some extra lift in the heart so you're not just overextending your low back. And wherever you are, take a few more breaths. Think of opening up big space into your rib cage. And then as you're ready, take your time spiraling it back down to hands and knees. From here, tuck your toes, hover your knees, and we're gonna walk our hands back to feet. So come on back to a fold. And let's take some time in this fold. So take your feet kind of wide, okay? Really bend your knees. I want this to be a really, a really passive experience in your back. So if you can really feel like your back and your neck are exerting no effort here, your legs are just holding your upper body. Okay, then you can feel some really nice traction happening in your low back. Maybe close your eyes. Take a few more breaths as you hang here. All right, as you're ready, bring your palms or your fingertips to the ground, okay? We're gonna shimmy the feet kind of wide. So you might even, if you have a mat, you might even wanna turn yourself kind of sideways on your mat, okay? Long ways. So find a long ways position where you can comfortably get your palms down. And you might have a lot or a little bend in your knees, but your toes are turned slightly inward. And so I just want you to gently bend into one knee at a time here. Okay, if it ever feels bad, just change the positioning of your feet. A bit nice and slow, just side to side. And then take a little time to set yourself up so that your back is nice and flat like a table. So your hands are under your shoulders. You're uh, pretty level. Okay, as you can be. And then we'll start to build a little bit of a twist here. So if you press down into one hand, just pick one, and then reach up with the other one, we have a nice little twist. Take a big breath in while you do that. And then exhale to bring that down. Switch sides. Inhale, the other hand goes up, but I want you to actively push into the bottom one, okay? And exhale to bring it down. So let's move like this side to side. Maybe you just close your eyes and kind of follow your own pace. Allow your big inhale to fill your rib cage as you twist and look up. Front, back, and sides. Okay, notice this. Each time you reach up, could you make extra effort to point your tailbone back? And how does that feel? Next time you reach up, 
let's pause there. We're just going to enjoy and just be here for a little while. So, okay, activate both shoulders. We want not passive in the, in the arms, but active. And point that tailbone away from the top of your head. Big breath here. Could you find a little extra stack of that top shoulder over the bottom shoulder? Could you find a little extra length in your spine? Nice, and how about that rib cage? Is there one more spot you could breathe into for this last big breath in? Nice, with your exhale, switch sides. You're coming down with the top hand. You're coming up with the down hand. And breathe here, we'll spend some time. Everything the same, guys. Strengthen your arms, peel open your big chest. Pull that tailbone away from the top of your head. Big breath here. Don't be afraid to use that breath to open up where you feel stuck. Maybe one more big luscious breath. And we're bringing it down, guys. Come on down that right hand back down under your or top hand, back down under your shoulders. Let's bring these feet back in. So shimmy them in, not all the way together, but maybe about as wide as a mat would be with the toes turned out a little bit. And we'll drop it down to a squat from here. So you can always keep your hands on the floor if that's more comfortable for your squat. Everyone's really different in their, in their squats. But if you can get kind of comfortable, make sure your heels are down, okay? And then see if you can pick your hands up and put them together. I like to tuck elbows in between knees and give the knees a little push away from each other. So here in a squat, we have a huge opportunity to really release a lot of tension across the insides and outsides of the hips. So push a little down into your heels, okay? So you're not totally passive in your legs and keep the spine nice and long. And if you want, you can put your thumbs against your heart here. See if you can find your heart beat. Still there. All right, maybe one more big breath here in your squat. And warming up your hips as you push into your legs. Okay, we're gonna come up and out. So drop your hands here, push into your feet, lift your hips up nice and slow here. We're gonna come all the way up. So grounding in your heels, inhale, roll yourself. Stacking your vertebrae, reach up nice and tall. Exhaling here, hinge yourself all the way back down. So you're hinging those hips, folding it down. So we're back in the fold that we started in. And just take a few more moments here. We're gonna turn long ways on the mat again. <laughs> okay, take a moment, just let that head hang. From here, my friends, palms back to the floor, walk them forward, find yourself on hands and knees again. So hopefully we built some nice warmth in the hips just now. You can even put your hand on it, probably feel the hips got a little bit warmer. So let's pick the right foot up, plant right foot by right hand. We wanna move the left knee back a little bit, okay? We'll start to circle the hips out a little bit here. So moving them in circles, notice how it feels in each hip socket. Make some really big, weird hip circle shapes. And then let's rewind it, take it back the other way. All right, and then come down to rest in 
your low lunge and up on your fingertips here. If you flex your right foot, okay, flexing that right foot, you can roll onto the outer edge of the foot and kind of drop it away from, drop the knee away from you, okay? And if it feels good here, you can put some extra weight on that left palm and take the right hand to the right knee and kind of press it open. You can look even back over your right shoulder. So kind of play here, allow that right hip to peel open. Okay, you can put more or less press on it. But we're just thinking of allowing that knee to fall out to the right. Sometimes that little twist is nice here too. Right, and as you're ready, we're gonna transition this straight into a pigeon posture. So let's walk this right foot over to the left, drop that right knee, and find that pigeon posture, getting into the hips. So align the hips with the floor, we square them off, we strengthen both the legs, and resist the floor just a little bit. Go ahead and walk your hands out away from you. And relax down. Let's take some breaths here in pigeon posture. So put some resistance in your legs, activate them and push the floor down. Give yourself some time here, slow your breath down. We're going to be here for three or four more very slow, very long breaths. So you know you have time. Notice how that right hip feels, the left hip, the low back. Maybe one more big breath here in your pigeon posture. All right, start to press yourself up and out of that one. Tuck the back toes, hover that back knee. We're gonna bring it up and back to hands and knees for a moment. And then from there, get your bearings, tuck your toes. We're gonna bring it all the way back to a fold. So come on back, walk your hands to your feet. We'll take a little time here to get kind of deep into this fold. So you can always bend your knees to make this less intense on the backs of your legs. Okay, always you can do that. You can support yourself on your fingertips or even a block. But wherever you are, I wanna encourage you to really push down into your leg bones and think of pulling back in your muscles. And you can still do that with your knees bent. And if it feels good, take your hands to your calves. You can kind of hold your calves in your hand and gently hug your chest toward your knees and your knees toward your chest. Release the back of your neck here. Maybe shake your head. And feel your spine super long. Maybe one more huge breath here. And we're letting this go. So hands back to the floor, walk them forward, coming back to hands and knees. Let's take the left foot forward this time, plant it by your left hand. Make your lunge feel just right and we'll start to circle it out. So big circling hips in every direction. Take note of how this side feels. It's fascinating how different the two sides are. Okay, rewind. Okay, bring it back to your lunge and then I'm gonna 
maybe come up on fingertips for a little while. I find it just gives it a little more space to make your spine long. But we're going to flex the left foot, roll onto the outer edge of the left foot, and start to drop that left knee away. So we're feeling some big space kind of winging open on the inside of that left thigh. Okay, and I like to kind of turn to look over the left shoulder, maybe even left hand to left knee. So I want you to kind of play around with it. It feels a little different for everyone and it depends on the day, but just a little extra space in that left hip. That's what we're looking for. Maybe one or two more big breaths here. And from here, we're gonna go straight into a pigeon posture. So walk that left foot to the right and drop the left knee. Okay, always feel free to make it more gentle by bringing that left foot closer to your hips. Make it more intense by moving the left foot away. Okay, align your hips. They're leveled off with the ground. The legs are activating because okay, they're strong in the muscles and you're resisting the floor slightly. And then we walk the hands out. Nice breath here in your pigeon. So keep the legs active. I have to remind myself all the time in pigeon. Activate the legs. So they get kind of tired and soft here, but that's okay. But keep a little bit of press down in the legs. It'll really help you to open up in the hips. Notice where you feel it in your hips. Let's take three more long, slow breaths here, okay? Remember to keep your glutes activated in pigeon posture. All right, friends. I could spend forever in pigeon posture, but roll yourself up. Okay, tuck your toes, come on up and back to hands and knees. And from there, another fold. So tuck your toes, lift your knees, hands walk back to your feet. I wanna fold it here again with you. So come on and dive in, bend those knees. You can keep it more gentle, okay? Or you can hug the calves, okay? Go a little more foldy. Or if you wanna continue to dive in and kind of explore into that fold, keeping your longest spine. So you're actively moving the top of your head toward the ground and your tailbone to the sky. Start to press down through your leg bones, okay? Don't hurt your hamstrings. So don't do anything that feels bad. But if it feels good, press down through your bones like your heels want to shoot down. But the center of your foot is sucking upward. So there's a suction cup arch on each foot. So whatever you're exploring in this fold, keep breathing deeply. Always bringing the level of softness and the level of strength that your practice is calling for today. Nothing more. Maybe one more big breath here in whatever your fold is. Releasing tension from that back body. Go ahead and bring your hands back to the floor. Bring it down to your knees. Okay, so keep your knees under your hips. I wanna get the chest a little bit more open toward the ground. So walk your hands out. And then when they get out there, away from your knees to where you start to have long arms, make your fingertips uh, like spiders. So tent your hands. 
and use that extra height to start to drop your heart down toward the mat. So you can have your forehead down first, no problem, okay? That's where you might just wanna start. And I just want you to think of peeling open your armpits and your chest and your rib cage toward the floor. So you'll feel a big opening across that front body. Do your best to keep your belly button lifting so that you can really move this opening into your upper back instead of your lower. And if everything's feeling pretty good, you can start to rest your chin on the ground. It's possible that your chest might even rest on the ground. Just make sure it feels nice. And we'll take maybe three or four breaths here. This posture is called Anahatasana, okay, or melting heart pose. So I just want to invite you to take all that tension that you might have in your chest and your throat and your heart and melt it open. From here, friends. Get those palms to the floor. Drop those elbows and send your belly forward. And we are in a sphinx pose. So we just really opened up your shoulders, your armpit, your rib cage should be feeling nice and spacious. And hopefully that gives you a lot of nice freedom to square your elbows off just under your shoulders and start to grip the mat with your hands. So I want you to have a really active grip with your hands. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but make it nice and intentional. And press down into your elbows, but also pull back. So I want you to feel your heart pulling forward when you do that. Please remember to pull and never to push, okay? We don't want to push the spine up away from the floor. We want to think of pulling and lengthening it. So down in the elbows and you're pulling back, go ahead and point your tailbone at the center of the earth so you feel your glutes turn on and the tops of your feet start to press into the floor. Nice breath here in your sphinx. So keep those elbows pulling back and pushing down. And if you are perfectly happy here, then you'll just stay right here. But for some folks, they want a little bit more opening across the front of the body. So you can start to gently lift your elbows, okay? So your tailbone is really digging down. You might feel your belly button lifting, that's fine, okay? But keep that pulling feeling in your arms. So the hands are gripping, your neck is long. Maybe take one or two more big breaths into your chest. Long neck for this last breath. And then we're letting it go. Go ahead and come all the way down to the floor with your forehead. So just lay your head down and make cactus arms here. Take a few breaths and let that back bend kind of wash over you. So we just kind of warmed and opened your upper body. And I just want to seal that off with giving you a really nice stretch in your shoulders. So let's get into a nice shoulder opener here. If you look to the left here, keeping your right arm in this cactus shape on the floor, with the palm down, use that left hand to roll into your right side. Okay. At this point, if you want to slide your right elbow up or down, you have a chance to, mod to modify, kind of adjust it. But I like to keep it at about a right angle. Okay? And then you can commit by pulling that right knee up and in. So here we have a really nice shoulder stretch. If it's too much, just drop your chest toward the floor. Okay, it should help. If you like it and you kind of want to dive in, you want to get the most out of it that you, that you can, okay, without any pain, you're gonna start to press the floor with your right hand. So like you wanted to push the floor down with that right arm. And just breathe here. We're gonna take five or six long slow breaths here. 
options, okay? To move more deeply into that right shoulder, into your chest, you can reach up with the left hand. To move even more deeply, you can drop it across your back. You might tuck those fingers underneath your right side. So a lot of good space opening up on that right side of your upper body. This is where we collect so much of our tension. So do your best to just let go. How about one more nice long breath? Letting go of any little tensions that might remain there. Okay, take your time. There's really no rush. We're just gonna switch sides. So if you wanna take a few extra breaths there, do it, okay? Transitioning to the other side is pretty simple. We're just gonna make cactus arms and look to the right. Use the right hand to roll onto your left side. So keep your left cactus arm, but adjust it if you need. I like my elbow a little lower on the left and a little higher on the right. When you're, when you're good, you tuck that left knee in and you're ready to settle in. I'll spin around to face you. So close your eyes here, let this be, let this be a place of surrender. <laughs> okay, but give it activity where it counts. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, you can back out by hugging the floor. Okay, if you're feeling pretty good, you wanna lean in, you're gonna start to press the floor with that left hand. So you'll feel that left shoulder turn on as we are lengthening it, which is our ideal form of stretching, eccentric contractions. Close your eyes and continue to breathe deeply into that left side. There's so much going on in there. So you can reach up with the right hand if you like. You can drop it across your back, but just keep breathing. Notice the sensations in that left armpit. Hmm. One more breath. Let's make this one really long and really slow. And roll yourself. Take your time. Feel free to take as much time as you need there. But for our purposes, I'm going to roll out. So once you are ready to come out of that, you'll have your hands under your shoulders, tuck in your toes, come on up to hands and knees. Okay, all the way back to a child's pose here. And that's where I'll end us tonight. So if another resting posture is more ideal for you, then feel free to rest in a different resting posture. But here in your child's pose or wherever you are, Allow yourself to just release all effort. We're no longer activating or doing anything. We're just gonna be here. Let your breath return to its natural pace. Notice if that's different than it was before. We started. Let your body soften and release all effort. And notice if your body feels different than it did about 45 minutes ago.
Release all control over your thoughts and just observe them. And notice compassionately if they look any different than they did about 45 minutes ago. Continue to rest here just like this for as long as you can. Bringing your awareness over and over again back to this moment, what is happening right now. This is where I will leave you for a practice today. So please keep resting. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for taking care of yourself.